Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. May God bless you today as we spend this time together. May he strengthen you. May he encourage you. May he give you hope in whatever situation you are involved in. The Lord is with you and he is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. So enter into his blessing today as we spend this time together. I'm going to begin by reading from Psalm 138. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. What a wonderful, wonderful God we serve. A God who hears when we cry out to him. He is mighty to save, mighty to deliver, mighty to heal. Whatever it is you need today, I pray that God will meet your need. We are going to be praying today to this God who is great, to this God who hears the cries of the afflicted, to this God who hears those who call upon his name. We're going to be continuing in prayer regarding this war in Ukraine. And we're praying today for persecuted Christians in the nation of Burkina Faso. As you know, every week here on Worship in the Word, we pray for a different nation around the world where Christians are persecuted for their faith. So let me read to you from the World Watch List booklet what it has to say regarding what Christians face in Burkina Faso today. Burkina Faso is located in a region where Islamist groups have growing influence. Jihadist violence has been rapidly increasing in recent years, and extremists have exploited the government's weakness during the COVID-19 crisis to gain control of the country's infrastructure. There are over one million internally displaced people in Burkina Faso, many of whom are Christians. Believers who have converted from Islam face the most persecution. Family and community members often reject them and try to force them to renounce their Christian faith. So please join with us later as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Burkina Faso and of course regarding this war in Ukraine. But now let's turn our attention to the grace of God. The God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We're going to sing that great, great old hymn. And I know we come back to this one time and time and time again, but it's such a great hymn because the grace of God is so wonderful. The grace of God is without limit. The grace of God is all encompassing. The grace of God is what enables us to come to him for salvation. So let's sing together this morning. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. God bless you as we worship the Lord together today. But 
But now I'm found Was blind But now I see Twas grace that taught My heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, the promise good to me His word my hope secures He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures The earth shall soon Dissolve like snow The sun forbear to shine But God who called me here below Will be forever mine My chains are gone I've been set free my God, my Savior has ransomed me And like a flood, His mercy reigns Unending love, amazing grace My chains are gone, I've been set free My God, my Savior Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you love us so much. You love each and every one of us. And we thank you that you see each of us as individuals, not just as a whole. And we thank you that you particularly love your people in Burkina Faso, each and every one of them. You know each of them by name. You've counted the hairs on their head. They are infinitely precious to you, the apple of your eye. So in that volatile country, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you are looking out for your people. And we ask you to intervene, intervene and give them rest from the persecution they suffer. We thank you that with you, your promises are yes and amen. You are our hope and a refuge in trouble. And we thank you for that, Lord, that we can rest in you. Make that a reality for each of your people in Burkina Faso. Make it a reality that they know you closer and closer. 
and they feel your love with them and on them each and every day. And Lord, there's another volatile country, what's happening in Ukraine. The whole situation there is volatile. And we thank you that again, you can see what's going on. You can see the big picture. We thank you that you are merciful, but you're also a God of justice and you see what is right and what needs to be judged. So we ask you to intervene there as well, that this war will finish, that people will be kept safe. Nobody else will need to die. And that freedom will come to all involved in this situation. We thank you, Lord, that you are working. We can't see it, but we know you're not asleep. You know what's going on. And we thank you that we can rely on you. We just praise you for this, Lord, and we thank you once again in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just reading one verse of scripture this morning, and it's Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, where Jesus says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Just one verse, but Jesus says so much in this one verse. He says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear that word treasure, my mind automatically goes to great novels like Treasure Island or films like the, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies or even uh, the, the, the Indiana Jones films where they're searching for this valuable commodity, this valuable item. They're searching for that hidden treasure chest or whatever it is, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail. They are searching and, and people are prepared in those films and in those novels to do almost anything to get that treasure, to find that treasure. They will do anything to anyone. They will kill, they will steal, they will lie. They will do anything they can in order to find that treasure and keep that treasure for themselves. So you see automatically when you think of treasure, you think of something that people will stop at nothing to get. But the kingdom of heaven, Jesus describes as treasure. Now, when he's speaking of treasure here, Jesus is not just speaking of a treasure chest or a hoard of treasure. He's not just speaking of a, a cavern somewhere where this, this hoard of treasure is to be found and where there is a gold and where there is diamonds and where there is jewellery and where there are crowns and where there are all of these different things. When Jesus is speaking of treasure hidden in a field, most scholars agree that actually the language Jesus is using is speaking of a limitless supply of treasure. He's speaking of a mine, a gold mine, a diamond mine, a sapphire mine, a ruby mine, whatever it is, but it is limitless. It extends under the ground and you find the entrance to it. And beyond that entrance, you see just this, this, mass of wealth and of treasure that is limitless in its supply. The wonderful thing about the kingdom of heaven is that it is, is it's limitless in its supply. There is limitless joy in the kingdom of heaven. There is limitless peace in the kingdom of heaven. There is limitless health in the kingdom of heaven. There is limitless wisdom in the kingdom of heaven. There is wholeness. There is abundance of life. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and life more abundant. There is a gift. There is a wealth of the things of God that are without limit. The kingdom of heaven, it's like finding that mine in which there are treasures forevermore. 
This is what Jesus says when he says, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. But then I want you to notice what Jesus says after this man has found this treasure hidden in the field. It says for joy over it. He goes and sells all that he has and buys that field for joy over it. You know, through the centuries, there has been this deception sold to so many people that the kingdom of heaven is just boring. How many of us have seen comedy sketches or cartoons where what you see is a couple of angels sat on a cloud and basically all they've got to do is they've got a harp to play and they've just got to be good and somehow being good is just portrayed as boring. They have to be holy and that is portrayed as boring. It's portrayed as the dullest thing imaginable. This is the great deception that has been sold down through the years that somehow when you find the kingdom of heaven when you enter into the kingdom of heaven that you are diminished that you are just reduced to this sort of monochrome existence i remember a friend of ours when we used to live in birmingham she would tell everyone she said you know before i became a christian i resisted becoming a christian because even though i knew Jesus was the way, the truth and the life. Even though I knew that Jesus offers life forevermore, I thought that if I became a Christian, all that God would do would be to find the things that I found the most unappealing in life, the things that I really didn't want to do and make me do them. She had this impression that in God's kingdom, it was all going to be dull. It was all going to be boring. It was all going to be miserable. That somehow when you entered into the kingdom of heaven, life was going to be sucked out of you. But the truth is that when you come into the kingdom of heaven, when you discover the kingdom of heaven, you find so much that is wonderful that it fills us with joy. Don't fall for the lie that the kingdom of heaven is just boring. Don't fall for the lie that the kingdom of heaven is just black and white. The kingdom of heaven is glorious, glorious technicolor. It is everything you could ever wish for and so much more. In the kingdom of heaven, there is love that is beyond fathom that is beyond measure it is a love that is unfailing it is a love that is is forever in the kingdom of heaven there is joy unspeakable the kingdom of heaven is righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost the kingdom of heaven is a place where there is joy it is a joyful joyful thing to enter into the kingdom of heaven you know when somebody surrenders their life to jesus christ it tells us there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels that means that it's not the angels who are rejoicing so many people think it's the angels having having a party no when one person comes to repentance and faith in jesus christ and enters into the kingdom of heaven it is god the father god the son god the holy spirit who are doing the rejoicing why because someone else has entered into the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven is a place of such limitless limitless joy don't fall for the lie that the kingdom of heaven is boring the kingdom of heaven is not just about God taking things away from you God takes nothing away from you that is positive what God does take away from you are those things that would stop you entering into the kingdom of heaven. The kind of things that ruin people's lives even here on this earth. And they find their root in something called sin. Sin is what separates us from this God who is love. That separates us from this joyful God. Sin is what separates us from God in whom is all life. Sin is what separates us from God in whom there is wholeness, in whom there is health, in whom there is everything we could ever need. There is life more abundant in the kingdom of heaven. But the tragedy is that so many people fall for this lie. Just turn to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. This is when a man of great wealth 
comes to Jesus and in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 19 it says now behold one came and said to him good teacher what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life so he said to him why do you call me good no one is good but one that is God but if you want to enter into life keep the commandments he said to him which ones Jesus said you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness, honour your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. That young man was more focused on what he would have to surrender than on what he would gain. Had he done what Jesus said, that young man would have entered into everlasting life. If he had given away all that he had and come and followed Jesus, he would have received the gift of everlasting life. But he didn't see its true worth. All he saw was what he would have to give up. But you know, here on this earth, we see so often what people are prepared to give up for something that they regard as truly precious. You see a young woman who is wanting the perfect wedding. She hasn't got a billionaire father to pay for it all, but she wants a perfect wedding. She wants the right dress. She wants the right venue. She wants the right flowers. She wants everything to be perfect on the day. She wants to look good on the day. She wants to look beautiful for her husband on the day. And what do you see? You see those young women saying, if the only way that I am going to afford what I truly want is to give up going out so often, then I'm going to stop going out so often. If it means that I don't buy new clothes every week, then I'm going to stop buying new clothes every week. I'm going to make do with what I have got. I'm going to save that money and I'm going to put it all towards my wedding. If it means that I don't go on, a, on, a, on an exotic holiday in some wonderful tropical location and I go caravanning for a week, then I will go caravanning for a week. She is willing to give things up in order to to achieve her goal of having the perfect wedding. You see sportsmen and sportswomen who are so determined to achieve that gold medal or achieve that cup or achieve that trophy, whatever it is, but they are willing to give it up to become the, the heavyweight champion of the world or the Wimbledon champion or whatever it is. And you see them, they are willing to give up the food that they might otherwise eat, the, the junk food that they enjoy. They're willing to give up their time. They're willing to give up going out so often. They're willing to give up all of these things so that they will gain that prize that they are working so hard for. When you see how much value people put on a prize, on a trophy, and what they are willing to give up for it, Jesus says, if anyone would come follow me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And everybody looks at that and they think, there you go. The Christian life is just about being miserable. But the Christian life is about attaining what Jesus promises us. Forgiveness of sin. The joy of knowing that on the great day of judgment, our names will be found in the Lamb's book of life. And so we are free from the fear of everlasting punishment and condemnation. It is so wonderful to live life in the knowledge and in the peace that that gives. The kingdom of heaven is a place where there is no sickness, where there is no sighing, where all sorrow is gone, where God himself wipes away every tear. The kingdom of heaven is beyond our imagination. It is so glorious. It is so wonderful. It is a place of peace. It is a place of everlasting life. It is a place of joy unspeakable. Let me read to you from Revelation, the book of Revelation, where we see the kingdom of heaven.
in its fullness after Jesus has returned to judge the earth. It tells us this. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then just go on to Revelation 22, beginning at verse 1. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. The kingdom of heaven is glorious. The kingdom of heaven is wonderful. It's worth surrendering our lives for the kingdom of heaven. And you know what? Jesus gave us the great example. In the Garden of Gethsemane, three times as Jesus faced the cross, Jesus prayed to the Father, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Yet not my will, but yours. Jesus was willing to surrender everything and go to the cross and die on the cross. Why? Because the Bible tells us, for the joy set before him, Jesus willingly endured the cross. Jesus was willing to endure the cross so that he could know that rejoicing with his Father and the Holy Spirit in heaven, that whoever calls on his name will be saved because he has borne the punishment that our sin deserved. Do you see, Jesus was willing to surrender everything in order to receive that joy. And Jesus received so much more because Jesus was willing and obedient to the death of the cross. Therefore, God has exalted him to the highest place. Jesus now is seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus has been given the name that is above all names. You receive so much more than you give up. If you are willing to surrender your life to Christ, if you are willing to surrender to Jesus, then he gives you everlasting life. A life that is filled with peace, a life that is filled with joy, a life that is free from slavery to sin, a life that is free from corruption, a life that is free from the fear of judgment, a life that is free to live as God always intended you to. God never intended you to live a miserable life. God wants you to have a good life. God wants you to have a life that is free from poverty. God wants you to have a life that is free from sickness. God wants you to have a life that is filled with his joy. Even in the middle of the most appalling circumstances, you can know his joy. But most of all, you can know that your sins are forgiven. That you have right standing with God. That you enter into this kingdom that is glorious. You enter into a relationship with the God who created you. You enter into a place where you can come boldly before God with your prayers and your petitions and your requests to find mercy in times of need. That is yours for the asking if you are willing to lay down your life for him to surrender that old way of life, that old sinful life to receive the glorious treasure 
of the kingdom of heaven that is without limit. There was a missionary many years ago, a man called Jim Elliott, who was trying to reach the Ecuadorian Indians and he died in his efforts to try and reach them. He was martyred for what he was trying to do, but he came out with a remarkable statement. He said this, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. You know, everything you gain in this world, you're not going to be able to take it with you. Whatever treasure you might amass in this world, whatever connections you might gain in this world, whatever good things, whatever houses, whatever boats, whatever cars, whatever amounts in your bank account, you're not going to be able to take it with you. But if you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you gain so much more. What are you willing to give in order to receive the kingdom of heaven? It costs Jesus everything to give you that opportunity. And all he says is, believe in me, take up your cross, deny yourself. That means let go of the things that you can't keep anyway, so that you gain that which you will never lose once you have received it in the kingdom of heaven. Will you come today and surrender your life to Christ? Will you come today and enter in to the kingdom of heaven through the salvation that only Jesus can give? It's only Jesus who died for you. It's only Jesus who bore the punishment for our sins. It is only in the name of Jesus that God has given us this means of entering in. So is that you today? If it is, and you are willing to lay down your life for Jesus' sake, then pray this prayer now. Don't pray it if you don't mean it. You know, in countries around the world where Christians are persecuted for their faith, when somebody comes to a Christian and says, I want to follow your God, they will ask them the question, are you willing to die for Jesus? And unless they can answer that question, then they will not lead them to Christ. It is only when they see that somebody is willing to lay down their life for Jesus that they will pray with them because then they know that they mean business. If that is you today, if you mean business with God, God will do business with you. So we're going to pray now. And if that's you, then you can receive the joy of entering in to the kingdom of heaven right here, right now, wherever you are. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come as a sinner, knowing that I need to be forgiven of my sin, knowing that there is a kingdom awaiting that is so glorious that it is not worth losing. Lord, I need to receive this gift of everlasting life. And so I come and I ask you today to forgive me of my sin, to wash me clean and to give me that newness of life, that abundance of life, which only comes through you, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the son of God who laid down his life for me on the cross. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are are alive today you are risen from the dead and that you save all who will call upon your name lord i call upon your name right now i ask you to set me free from slavery to sin i ask you to set me free of the things which beset me and drag me down and i ask you to give me everlasting life lord i repent of my sin i am sorry for my sin. I choose today to turn away from that old life and to follow you. Lord, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit and enable me to live that life which you came to give. I will love you and serve you and follow you as best as I can every day of my life, knowing that there is a rich reward at the end. 
as I enter into the fullness of your glory, the fullness of your kingdom. I surrender my life to you, Jesus, and I thank you for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer and you've meant it, then Jesus will have saved you today. You are forgiven of your sin and you enter in to the kingdom of heaven. So God bless you. If you have prayed that prayer, I simply ask that you would get in touch with us and let us know. It's encouraging for us, but you know what? Jesus said this. If you will confess me before men, then I will confess you before my Father in heaven. If you will confess Jesus before men, then that means that you have surrendered your life to him and you have received the kingdom of heaven for the joy set before you. If you're anywhere in Clevedon, we meet at the community centre on Prince's Road every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. It would be wonderful if you could come and join us. If you're not in Clevedon, then please get in touch anyway and we will pray with you. We will encourage you. We will do whatever we can to help you in this new life with Jesus Christ. We're back again here on YouTube at the same time next week. That's 10 a.m. UK time. So until then, may God bless you. May you walk in peace, love, joy, and in everything that Jesus Christ came to give you. God bless you. Bye-bye.